Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to speak about Jupiter and Gemini through the 12 houses. So Jupiter will be in Gemini solidly for the next year. Wherever Jupiter is placed, we're going to find in general the opportunity for a growth and expansion through more information, data, perspectives. Something that will open our mind to seeing this world and actually being able to logically uh, cohesively understand it in a very tangible and concrete way, in a way that we weren't able to prior. So we're hearing thoughts we've never heard or thought before. And so our empirical understanding of life, the way we're mapping it out, to actually in a very tangible way say, this is where we are, this is where we're going, this is the greater picture unfolding, this is expanding right now. But we need to be careful with any Jupiter placement not to rush to have it all logically figured out. Like one of the issues with Jupiter and Gemini would be adding so much information, so much knowledge, so much research, so much talking that we're not actually able to assimilate any of it. So one of the essential teachings for Jupiter and Gemini through the houses is one of simplification. Less is more. This really brings forward the energy of authenticity what is it we're really wanting to learn? What are, what are our authentic questions? What do we really want to talk about? So there's an enhanced capacity here if we embrace it to simplify our life, all the extraneous thinking and talking and mental activity and distractions that we all know about. We can streamline our path and really feel like we're on a pilgrimage towards essential learning and realization. But we only do that when we recognize the preciousness of the opportunity in front of us. And we're willing to let go in a sense, we're willing to simplify our life so we can really focus on this learning experience. Uh, another dimension here would be, we really want to feel that the journey in front of us is a wide open road. So we don't want to start off with having too many answers. If we have it all logically um, pieced together already, we're not going to allow ourselves to learn anything new. So there's a sort of beginner's mind with Jupiter in Gemini. This really means saying, wow, there's so much that I've yet to learn. And I don't want to close the door and say, this isn't going to help me, or that's not going to help me, or I don't want to listen to that, or that's not interesting. Who knows where the journey will take us? Oftentimes, we get just what we need by encountering an angle or a perspective that's beyond the scope of what we're familiar with. That's oftentimes what's necessary to kind of open our mind to a much broader understanding of our life. So feel free to jump ahead to the house that you want to look at. I'm gonna put that time signatures below. Let's bear in mind that Jupiter is about a few weeks at this point, two weeks or so into Gemini. I use the Porphyry house system, which means in the house system that I work with, zero degrees Gemini can easily fall in the middle of a house. So I want us to appreciate that for most of us, Jupiter is already going to be in the house that it's in, just transitioning from Taurus into Gemini. So from that angle, I want to speak briefly just to the energy of what it means for Taurus to move, for, for Jupiter to move from Taurus to Gemini. Taurus is a consolidation of energy. Right? We're really kind of narrowing and focusing on our values and what's of essence, what we're growing. And there's sort of an expansion that happens out of Taurus that now wants to explore the world around us. Psychologically, the energy of this transition is one of, okay, I'm really cultivating a lot of self-knowledge. I'm figuring out who I am, what I'm doing here, and I'm secure enough. Right? There's some sense of stability on the inside that then allows me to say, okay, time to kind of refine and get more of the details. So an analogy of this is you have the vision to grow a garden. You decide you're going to grow a garden. You decide this is what I'm going to grow. This is what I like. This is what I want, Jupiter and Taurus. But you don't necessarily know where that garden will be. Further, you think you know the things that you want to grow, but maybe that's because you learn that you need vitamin C and peppers will give you vitamin C. But there might be more to learn. Maybe your dietary needs are more complex. Maybe the basis from which you've decided what you think you need is limited or narrow. Right? So, so whatever self-development and self-exploration was sort of grounded in Taurus, we're not negating that. 
we're expanding it and sort of adding more color and more dimension to the existing framework of our life. Just think about the kinds of things you've been realizing about your life right now. And if you have this knowledge, think about where is Jupiter in Taurus? Where has that been transiting through your chart for the past several months in particular? There, there's some sense of I'm valuing my life. I'm valuing who I am. I'm learning to trust myself, trust my feelings, trust my body, trust my intuition, trust my own embodied sense of my path. And then Jupiter in Gemini says, great. And there's a lot you don't know. So don't be too fixed. Don't be too stubborn. Don't be too controlling of the process because you're in for a heck of a lot of learning. And I'll just say this to close this introduction. If we appreciate that new perspective, new thoughts, new data will open our mind and create pathways of thought that we've never had and open up possibilities that we've never had before. There's sort of an implication for a kind of humility with Jupiter and Gemini. We want to appreciate that this life experience wants to teach us. We're here for growth. We're here to expand our greater potential and to realize more of who we are. And we can apply that in any area of our life. But fundamentally, this is, even if we're thinking about money or business or love or sexuality, everything at its core is about spiritual realization. We're going to be learning these principles and then applying it into any area of our life. So there's something very humbling and just being able to recognize, I am really willing to learn. And Jupiter and Gemini emphasizes the difference between, I don't know, let me figure it out. Let me get a reading with this person. Let me read this book. Let me watch that video. Let me scroll in here. Let me take this class. A sort of frenetic sense of, I don't know enough. I thought I was growing a garden, but it's not going anymore. Or this doctor said, actually, I don't need vitamin C. And all these perspectives that sometimes make sense, sometimes don't make sense, but kind of lands relative to our own existing self-doubt or disbelief in our ability to navigate with our own intuition. If we don't believe that we have the ability to know or understand, this Jupiter and Gemini can be a frenetic, empty, restless search for more and more information that we just won't be able to assimilate. It won't get us anywhere, right? To contrast that with if we really understand this life, this journey is for spiritual realization, for deepening our own knowledge of ourself, then when we recognize there's so much more to know, it's going to be more of a matter of finding that authentic question. Meeting. Here's something I don't understand. Now, when I don't understand something, I have the capacity to think critically about it, to formulate a useful question. Right? Not, not to run towards an answer, but to really take my time and get to know what is it that I'm asking what is it I want to know? What is it I'm wanting to learn more about? Where is, it, where is it I'm seeking more insight? This is exactly where we create the space for learning, which is always going to be spontaneous because we're always going to have a moment of realizing something we didn't previously know. Otherwise, we wouldn't be learning it. So we create the space. Jeffrey Wolf Green often said with Jupiter, you have to let go to receive. Let go of all the ways we're filling our mind with useless thinking, data, answers, searching, there's a peace and, and, a, and a prayer here for peace and simplicity where we can rest and say, I know I'm where I need to be and I'm going to start learning now. There's some essential learning and growth I'm available for and it's right here, which means this is exactly where I'm meant to be. Before we jump in, if you're appreciating these teachings, I have many classes, self-study courses and class series available for purchase and many free teachings all available on my website. So if this resonates with you and you want to go deeper, check it out in the description below. Your support is much appreciated. This supports my livelihood, supports my family. I am also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions for individuals and couples. And I also offer long-term soul-to-soul companionship sessions for those that want to work with me on a more long-term basis. All right. Let's get started with Jupiter in Gemini in the first house. The first house archetype is all about freedom, right? The first house corresponds to how we are instinctively individuating and becoming, kind of stepping into our life path moment to moment. It requires a sort of freedom where we need to know that we can make the essential choices that we need to make in any moment in our life 
to move in the direction that we need to. So this is freedom of the mind. We want to know that we can free our minds and think freely. So there needs to be a lot of spaciousness here to initiate new pathways of thinking, new lines of thought. The issue here would be a hastiness, right? The tendency within the first house would be a sort of, um, I need to get there right now. Or I need answers right now. A sense of immediacy. And so we really want to clarify the difference between um, immediacy and imminency. Like the imminency is there is growth here. There's something to learn. So we want to have a strong um, presence, a strong sense of leadership. Follow your instinctual guidance here. What are you being guided from the inside to ask about? What do you want to research? And there might be a completely new pathway to explore. The key here is you have to embrace this wide open door to start a whole new cycle. This can actually be very exciting if you don't go crazy. Like the overdoing it here can really be emphasized. It's like taking on too much, getting involved in too much, overstimulating yourself. But at the same time, if you're following your intuition, this can begin a whole new cycle. Very often, planets, especially the slower moving planets, when they move into the first house or enter a new sign in the first house, it, it often feels like, in a very tangible way that a whole new life cycle is beginning. Right? For Jupiter, it's going to be 12-ish years until it comes back, right? So this is opening up a phase of experience where you have to walk it. You have to see what happens. You have to be open to going somewhere that you've never been before. And one thing I'll say to this is it requires sort of courage and bravery. You know, I'm going to start this new class or go to this new location, do this. It's, it's the sense of newness. And with the first house, that can feel scary because if we're doing something new, we don't really know what the outcome is going to be. We just have to trust ourselves and be willing to learn from it as we go. One more thing to add with Jupiter and Gemini in the first house. This is about being authentic about your desire, about your personal will. I think this signature can really speak to a great possibility to gather new perspective, new information, where we realize, ah, this is where I want to go. So we can really change the course, the direction that we're moving as we access a more authentic sense of personal will and let go of what maybe wasn't as authentic. And again, that will require some dimension of courage and self-leadership and self-trust to let go of something that maybe you've known that you've been doing and to initiate a new path that will promise more expansion. It will feel like you're moving in the direction of your destiny. Okay, let's move into the second house. The second house here is emphasizing self-esteem and self-value in our own mind. This is intellectual or mental self-reliance. You have the answers inside of you. Your mind is a great resource and you're agile and clear enough to know how to navigate life and learn and receive what you need to in order to expand your living. Here, the emphasis is on, I have what I need, and I know how to think for myself, and I know how to think critically for myself. So the metaphor is kind of like, this journey of expansion might actually feel like going deep into the forest with the trees or with your books, with the earth, with your body, and doing a deep study of what is of essence to your life. What makes your life livable? What's really important for you? And I also want to emphasize in particular with the second house, the importance of sort of narrowing and simplifying. You want to narrow what is not necessary. Like what, what flavors, thoughts, ideas aren't really landing for you? Because if you're bombarding yourself with too much, you'll feel alienated from your own personal experience. The key is you're trusting yourself and really navigating this from the inside out and quite possibly the need to kind of let go or ignore other voices or opinions or perspectives that really aren't necessary or helpful for where you're needing to go. It really does emphasize like the richness of that inner hermit journey. One more thing to say about Jupiter and Gemini in the second house, while there is an essential quality of self-reliance, self-trust, self-value, there can be a stubbornness and resistance to change within the second house. Here, there might be a familiarity with the world that one knows. I have my logical frameworks and understanding all mapped out. It's all very clear and logical, and I got it figured out, and I'm comfortable with it. 
I don't want to change my thinking. I'm very stubborn in my thinking. That's the idea here. So Jupiter may be inviting the soul to get out of its well of isolation, where one's thinking might be very narrow and limited, and to open up to a more expanded framework, an expanded perspective and a way of approaching and thinking about life. And this would have the effect of greatly enhancing um, the livability and meaning of the life that the soul is living. Third house, of course, this is emphasizing the existing Gemini archetype. In the third house, we're gathering a lot of information. We're learning. It's the school that we're going through. So the most tangible way, this says, are you going back to school? Is there some kind of new journey of education and realization that you're called to embark upon? This is a very external, engaging, mentally stimulated kind of experience. On the most basic level, there's going to be a lot of new pathways opening up for you to research, catalog, data, write, teach in ways that will both expand your own understanding, share useful knowledge with other people, and also make you available to communicate and receive rich exchange with other people. What's interesting about the third house is it's traveling, local travel, moving around, commerce, exchanging, right? But it's not just local, okay? You can go anywhere, and the idea with third house is it, it's local in the sense that you're going to want to be a local wherever you go, right? So you're going to go to France, you're going to go to a foreign country, you're going to go to the United States. However it is, you're going to adopt to the culture and speak the language. And that adoptability is going to open up possibilities of exchange and relatability and knowledge being shared that wasn't otherwise available had there not been this sort of availability and adoptability. So this is kind of like the metaphor of going to university abroad or going on a really interesting field trip. We are going to be investigating something that's going to open up doors that you've never walked through and you want to trust it. In this case, what can really be hard is the sort of hemispheric switching, kind of moving between the left brain and the right brain. Like of all signatures, maybe the sixth house too. This is where we really want to be mindful not to overload our nervous system, right? Too much talking, too much data, too much, oh, I want to go here, I want to try that. Too many opportunities. Third house being a very young house. So we need to really be guided by our own intuition. So we're embracing all the opportunities for enrichment that's here without overloading it, without going too far. One more thing to say about the signature is it can really emphasize the possibility for scatteredness. If we remember that Jupiter is about this journey that promises the possibility of greater realization, it's orienting from an intuitive place, we can have a lot of distractions, climbing the mountain. And on the way, you see, oh, here's a shiny opportunity or something interesting or fascinating. Here, try this, talk to me here. All kinds of possibilities. And so there can be a sense of becoming overly scattered, taking in too much experience, too many um, interactions, too much data, not really being able to assimilate any of it. So we really want to orient in a way where we're coming from an intuitive place and being able to reference our learning from an intuitive point of integration, as opposed to trying to almost add more experience or add more data in order to come to some kind of understanding. One more perspective, if you're reading a book or you're studying a topic, there's a learning intention, right? There's a sense of I'm intuitively drawn towards a particular learning experience. I'm not necessarily open to everything and anything. If it's not landing with my sense of my path, it's not necessary. So we might find ourselves opening up other books or exploring other things, but it's it's all coming back to a core reference, right? There's a thesis to our learning which is what allows us to assimilate and integrate all of our information, all of our learning. Fourth house. Fourth house is about the ground of family and home. It's where we feel the energetic experience of family, not as much as like the physical location of it. We're learning how to care and nurture ourselves as we grow through this life journey and to provide that empathy and that care and that nurturance to others as well. It's the energetic experience of feeling safe, feeling rested. So I know I'm okay. I'm safe. I can face life and I know who I am. I know where I belong on an emotional level. We need to have that sense of I'm okay and I can take care of myself and can nurture myself. I can be rested as we're moving through life experience. 
What's interesting with both Gemini and Jupiter is they're both sort of mental in their own ray, manifesting in the fourth house. It's taking all this expansive mental journey growth energy and putting it into an area that corresponds to our emotional well-being. So this is about using all of the knowledge and the information and the perspectives and the new ways of thinking to bring us further into ourself. And this could very tangibly bring forward new perspectives, new ways of eating, new information about who we are and how we live and how we need to care for ourselves, expanding our sense and our appreciation of family and how we can cultivate wellness in our own life. Here's a really good metaphor. Two of them. It's like having a cookbook with a bunch of recipes and the recipes open up new insights. Ah, if I drink this before I go to sleep, I'll have deeper sleep, right? Here are some new rhythms or new pathways that I can explore that will induce a deeper sense of relaxation or nourishment or emotional expression or emotional authenticity. That's using knowledge as a way to take us in as opposed to getting lost in a sort of emotional restlessness because maybe we don't feel safe. We feel ungrounded. We feel lost. We feel alienated. So we're going to lose ourselves by seeking a lot of information, but become distant from our present moment experience. Another cool metaphor is imagine your home is a youth hostel. So people come from all over the world and they share food, they share conversation, they share different ideas. Home becomes this incredibly rich and colorful and vibrant place of many different perspectives and views and ways of thinking and languages that all come together. So the metaphor of that being home offers so much richness, so many ways of thinking, so many ways of coming home to ourselves, and learning more about rest and nourishment and family and care and just the truth of creating a ground of safety in our lives. And of course, a very common expression of Jupiter moving in the fourth house in general could easily be you're traveling or you're moving somewhere. But that itself is just reflecting the internal expansion that's happening. Your sense of grounding and home in this life is opening up to a much broader and expanded dimension. Fundamentally, Jupiter and Gemini in the fourth says we're gaining fundamental emotional self-knowledge. We're expanding our understanding of who we are and what we're doing here and understanding ourselves in this life that we're living. Jupiter in Gemini in the fifth house. In the fifth house, we're birthing a sense of creative purpose and expression. It's all about self-actualization. So Jupiter in Gemini in the fifth house says, there are ways of creatively actualizing right now that are very exciting. Be an opportunist here. Be willing to show yourself. Be willing to express, write more. Um, Take that acting class. Do things that will allow you to expand the possibility of your own creative purpose. Let me just say this too with all of these, right? There's a sort of opportunism with Jupiter that is healthy. If we go too far, it's not, but there's a sense of embrace the moment, right? Follow our intuition, follow our guidance. And so with the fifth house, we're wanting to feel expressed. We're wanting to feel a connection to our own creative vitality and a sense of meaningful purpose. The key here would be one of duplicity or sorry, like making a show of oneself. Again, that would be a compensation issue. I actually don't feel very creatively expressed, so I'm going to put on a big show and make myself seem really big and expressive, but not really come from my authentic self. This speaks to authentic expression, and there's an immense amount of agility and skillfulness available in the fifth house. We just have to be willing to embrace it, and I think there's often the challenge here especially in this world of social media. You can think of this also in the third house too, even in the fourth, where everyone has their way of presenting themselves and their way of appearing, you know? There's something to be said to really finding one's creative niche and not trying to be impressive, right? It's like everyone's like, there's always something impressive on social media or online, right? Where there's almost like this cultural expectation that the next big thing is gonna be really cool, really funny. What if it was just really authentic? What if it was just really you? What if what the world really needs is less noise, less impressiveness, just more authenticity? I think that's a really great, great piece to work with, with Jupiter and Gemini in the fifth house. Same thing, I just to speak a little more to the fourth house. You know, we want to feel rested. We want to feel that our life is simple and grounded, that we're really receiving essential 
nourishment, right? Not the metaphor of just taking in a lot of things that we don't really need. Like I gave my daughter, who's healing a broken bone earlier today, some bone broth, and it was so, and she drank it. And I was so, oh, this is so good. That can be Gemini, Jupiter in the fourth house. Really opening the mind to consider what is essentially nourishing and that that expansive journey happens there. It's funny to put Jupiter in the second or Jupiter in the fourth, right? These more yin internal sort of homebody kind of houses because you're taking this expansive energy, but you're focusing it in these areas that are very internal by their nature and more introverted by their nature. And I think that's really beautiful. Okay, let's go to the sixth house now. Sixth house corresponds to areas of self-improvement. We're always developing more accuracy. We're constantly improving ourselves in the sixth house. Um, the key with the sixth house is to recognize that every part of our life requires some level of ongoing development. You don't just brush your teeth once. You don't just walk your dog once. It's ongoing effort, but we learn how to improve the techniques of all the things that we're doing. So Jupiter and Gemini in the sixth house, on one level, new information. New, new data, new knowledge, new techniques that will expand our health and our well-being. The challenge would be don't take every workshop or class or how-to or self-improvement you know, opportunity that you can possibly take because that can come from a sense of I, I don't feel good about my life or I'm not you know, healthy or I'm not where I want to be. And we can actually procrastinate really improving and developing and cultivating ourselves by endlessly seeking. Right? The essence of that sixth house beyond just improvement is we're fulfilling a, a meaningful function, right? We learn how to serve a purpose greater than ourselves. So there's an apprenticeship quality where we're really learning how to do things well and with integrity, and we develop a sort of mastery. So whether you're a healer or you're a doctor or any kind of practitioner or whatever your work is in life, there's new mental training, mental study, perhaps new apprenticeship to be cultivating new knowledge, you know, learning the names of all the herbs, learning the names of every single part of the body and some new field of study that will really expand and kind of bring the dots together. You know, if you were a massage therapist and you start working with astrology or you're an herbalist and you begin working with anatomy, like any two fields that you bring together, will bring a lot of expansion in the work and in your own cultivation. Um, it's just really important to check any impulse to come from a sense of inadequacy and lack. Because when we add too much, again, this is like a Jupiter thing everywhere, it all falls apart. So there can be issues with overworking the nervous system here, becoming way too stressed, like way too many projects, right? Way too many things going on. Uh, which then again leads to a great simplification. What's really of essence? Jupiter will have the, the blessing, if we embrace it, of making it really evident for us where we can be more authentic. And that's so good, right? Because when we're more authentic, we can really see what's really relevant, what's needed, and what's not. I'll add one thing to the third house too. Um, just appreciating that, as I mentioned in the intro, adding one thought to another thought, right? So if you're studying one thing, Jupiter and Gemini might say, hey, you know, you're, um, you're a, an English writer or you're, you're a historian. Now study anatomy, right? Or study astrology or study computer science. Like something else that seems totally unrelated, but because in essence, all things are related. If you follow the trails enough, all things in reality connect to reality ultimately. Um, any two seemingly different fields will ultimately connect and open up something completely new and expanded. So I just wanted to share that point too. One more useful reflection about the sixth house. Remember sixth house corresponds to procrastination and where we can create crisis by way of neglecting the necessary details that need to be tended to. So there can be two situations that arise here. One is just way too much, like too many projects going on, um, starting too many things. And there's like that Jupiter enthusiasm but it's too much and you're not able to get proper attention to all the little projects or studies or practices or trainings that you're doing, which leads to mistakes. And this can also serve the function of becoming a way of procrastinating, really tending to the next step and the next detail of what is really of essence. Oftentimes following all these different possibilities and opportunities becomes a way of avoiding the things that we're actually needing to do and just kind of distracting us. So there can be a lot of expansion and growth by focusing not so much on a lot, 
but giving a lot of honest attention to the things that we're doing and being thorough and open to learn in the process. And this will have the effect of bringing us to all kinds of other projects. Right? If we're really wanting to give attention to the work that we're each called to do, and the work that we're called to do is basically the work that if we don't do it, things fall apart. It's, it can be all facets of our life. By giving it attention, new pathways of thought and realization, possibly new experiences or new studies will then be integrated so we can bring that in. But that's different than trying to juggle so many things at once, which often just becomes a way of distracting ourselves. Now we're above the hemisphere, we're into the seventh house. The seventh house is about the psychology of listening. It's how in all the different relationships that we're in, we're going to listen to one another. We're going to get to know each other's needs. What needs can I meet? What needs cannot I meet? How can I ask for what I want? And we're learning and navigating the energy of balance and harmony in all of our relationships. So a key learning within the seventh house archetype is how to come into that place of harmony and balance overgiving, falling into roles and expectations. So Jupiter in Gemini in the seventh, on the one hand says, there are new ways of thinking about relationship. There are new ways of thinking about this relationship. I can ask questions that I've never asked before. Hey, I've been going along this route, giving this or expecting this, and a simple thought, what do they want? Or, hmm, how do I feel? Simple thoughts that correspond to the energy of balance and mutuality can open up whole new doors that can radically change the intimacy and the, the relevancy and the richness of any relationship or simply reveal a more authentic direction that it's meant to go. We have to be willing to speak the truth. And again, one of the issues here, and this is a, an issue you will find in, in any of the air or fire houses, mostly the air houses, is a sort of duplicity or inauthenticity. This signature can be great at knowing what to say and how to say it to make yourself believable, right? The shadow is convincing other people and being able to put forward the words that make the other person feel the way you want them to feel. That's not very authentic. That might be kind of useful if you're selling something, but it's not very honest if you actually want to be an honest person. And there can also be a sort of opportunism here, right? all these people, all these different relationship opportunities, kind of seeking one person after the next, be it romantically or just for whatever reason. It could even be like seeking too many teachers, right? Where we can overdo it in expanding outward into our relationship sphere, but not really experiencing the intimacy and the authenticity of the exchange itself. And the question really is, what is each relationship for? Why am I here? What's the purpose? We want to feel that sense of this is relevant. This is a journey of expansion and growth. And I'm so happy to be walking this path. If we're just taking in too much or if we're not really being honest or sincere, we're just addicted to being pleasing or gaining approval. We're not going to experience that pilgrimage journey um, that we need with Jupiter. So the key phrase for Jupiter in Gemini in the seventh is relational honesty and really opening our mind to just seeing things that we've never seen before. In the eighth house, we're probing into our deepest psychological fears, our greatest points of resistance, our addictions, our resentments, where we find our greatest psychological limitations. And so we're gonna resist change on the one hand, and also kind of cultivate the empowerment to embrace change in a very deep way, both. Right, the resistance to change is because we're fixated on whatever we're attached to. And that could be any kind of dynamic in our life that we just don't want to change because we're addicted to it or any kind of past dynamic that we're just holding on to because we're not really willing to let go and kind of find our own power beyond it. The embracing of the change is sort of this determination to say, whatever it takes to move on and come back to my agency, I'm going to do that. The key with Jupiter and Gemini in the eighth house is there is an opening of the mind to become very curious about one's inner psychology. What is the basis for these strong feelings? Why am I so possessive or attached or jealous or angry or victimized? Why do I really want this? Why am I feeling this aversion to that, right? Why am I getting, why, why, why? It's the why that's gonna probe deeper into our deeper psychological basis. So we might find ourselves studying on a very practical level, any kind of psychological works like evolutionary astrology or soul-focused astrology, 
anything that's psychologically oriented, getting into Jungian work, shadow work, so we can really start to understand more about the human psychology. Same is true, by the way, for the seventh. Like we might study relationship stuff, right? This will have more to do with understanding relationship dynamics or nonviolent communication or how to navigate needs or navigating different kinds of relationship types, things like that, more of a seventh house um, counseling dimension, whereas the eighth house is a much more psychological dimension. We might be researching sexuality and interested in death and things that are taboo. Now, of course, the issue here is with Jupiter in Gemini, we might find ourselves so very curious that we're going to get involved in people, places, and things that might be a little bit difficult to get out of, right? So a very big appetite to kind of connect with something much more deeply, to kind of go to these places that we haven't seen. And so, ooh, what's over there? Oh, I've, I've never had sex with a person like that before, or hmm, I've never had this kind of experience. That's kind of scary. Like there, there can be this um, tempting of our own death in a certain sense because we want to go somewhere we've never been. It's hinting at something underneath the surface. But if we're not honest with ourselves about our motivation and kind of like owning that we're getting into what we're getting into, we can get lost. And if we overdo it, it can be that opportunism of just seeking a lot of intense experience that will take us out of our soul. And we can get stuck in some really negative patterns and find ourselves really confused, really entangled. And sort of the darkness of Gemini and the eighth is like really dark thoughts, right? So you want to really be clear. So the, the catchphrase here is honesty about our own soul, probing honesty about what's really going on within. Okay, Jupiter and Gemini in the ninth house. In the ninth house, this is where we want to experience life as a pilgrimage, a journey of ongoing realization and growth. So it's our spiritual quest. However that expresses for any of us at any moment in time, we're, ha we're going to be sort of interpreting our experiences through a certain cosmological lens. And that cosmological lens is how we're going to create a sort of continuity for understanding what's going on and being able to grow and expand our consciousness through life. So let's say we're following a religious path. That religious path will become a cosmological perspective through which we're going to interpret our experiences. And that becomes a reference point that allows us to grow and expand and understand more about our life. But whenever a religion or a spiritual perspective or a cosmology becomes too narrow or limited, what happens is we simply end up recreating and reasserting the same belief system over and over and over again. So instead of learning something new, we're just coming into our experiences with the knowledge that we already have and what we already know and have already decided to be true. So the key here is to open our mind. Where's our path? Maybe it's not wrong. Maybe it is right for us. But where can our path open up? It simply means not just following dogma. We might want to ask some questions. Why am I doing this? Or what's this for? Um, what am I looking for? What am I seeking? Um, you know, just basic questions that bring self-reflection relative to the path that we're walking. And there might be other paths other cosmologies, let's say, that we might be drawn to that actually might add a framework and a perspective and expansion that we've never considered before. And I've shared this before. You know, if, if you're um, sort of a more um, spiritually oriented, devotional, bhakti oriented kind of spiritual person, that ninth house might express in that way. And that might be a part of your spiritual practice or your spiritual journey you know, your, your journey of expansion and growth through this path of devotion, it might be really interesting with Gemini there to start studying astronomy, you know, um, to start looking at some other teachers that are, that are a lot more logical or maybe atheistic, right? They're more empirical. They're not devotional in their nature, right? So this will then create more authenticity because if we're getting so far into a belief system, that it just becomes a thing that we're doing. You know, like the clothes you wear and the words you say and the meditation that you meditate, but it's no longer present moment direct experience. It becomes an ism, right? Where the Tao becomes an ism, where, where truth becomes a religion that then becomes some sort of construct or belief in our mind. It has to become a fresh moment to moment revelation. That's what makes realization real. So being open-minded to really not have all the answers 
and be willing to see something through perhaps other angles that we've never considered before. Again, so the negative side to this or the overdoing it side to this can easily be, you know, going way too far, um, seeking way too many paths. Again, many teachers, many practices, and just exploring everything endlessly, but not actually assimilating any of it. So we need to have honesty about the path, honesty about what I'm, where I'm going or why I'm doing this, right? It's easy to walk a journey because um, we all are. It's not always as easy to say, and here's why I'm doing it. So like not all who wander are lost, but some are. We want to really see with a signature that we're not just restless and endlessly seeking um, all kinds of answers and paths that there are. I mean, if you Google, what's the point of life? Or what sh how should I meditate? You're going to get a lot of answers. Who to believe, right? You, you follow your path. That's the answer. And there are going to be a lot of different angles or perspectives that might enhance and support us along the journey. But we're not finding our path from the outside. We're going from the inside first. And that's the key for the signature. Okay. Jupiter and Gemini in the 10th house. 10th house is how we're crystallizing our reality and coming into life, into the world with responsibility, saying I'm here to embrace limitations. I have work to do. There are roles to fulfill. This can be as a parent. This can be in society with your job. And so we need to be able to kind of focalize our consciousness and ground it in form. Like the crystallization of form and structure then reflects sort of the life that we're living, how we're grounding ourselves here in this human experience. An essential part of the 10th house is that self-reflection. Have I crystallized a reality that is too conditioned and I'm kind of stuck in something that maybe looks good on the outside, but is sort of empty on the inside? Like I got the job and the career and the plaque and the status and the name and the title, but how do I really feel? And the roles that we play in life, is it really true to our soul? Another dimension to the 10th house is the child. Like We are children from the 10th house perspective um, that need to learn how to grow up. Children aren't yet disciplined. And so from the point of view of the child, the 10th house is how we're disciplined, right? How we learn to embrace necessary limits and boundaries in our life so we can be responsible and function in society. Now, Jupiter and Gemini in the 10th house, on the one hand, is going to say, your work in this world, your roles, you could be wearing many hats. This is very entrepreneurial. This can bring a lot of success, a lot of new possibilities. But at the same time, if we're running after good sounding ideas, these can be very inauthentic hats. The hat that looks good on social media, the hat that, you know, I was told I should wear when I was rewarded by my parents when I was a child. We can be conditioned by all these things that really aren't true for us. So this wants to bring out our authentic voice. What is the work that you're here to do in this world where you can say, I'm showing up, I'm taking responsibility for my life and I'm doing my job and I'm authentic about it and I'm not worried about success or how it looks or what the world thinks about me or getting the approval of whatever is outside of me or the projection of external authority figures. I'm coming from a personally authentic place. So the simplification with Jupiter and Gemini in the 10th house is oftentimes while there can be many different hats that are worn, sort of letting go of what's just an empty role. Then there can be this great expansion and realizing, oh, here's a business that I create or a book that I can write or a course that I can create or a mentorship opportunity, something that really feels authentic. And all the other things that we do kind of happen in a very organic and authentic way because we're not overdoing it. We're not trying to add too much. The last thing that I would highlight with Jupiter and Gemini in the 10th house has to do with ethics and morality. It can be very easy to lie your way into success or cheat on the test or copy someone else's work or plagiarize writing. So when there's that opportunism, there can be that sense of, oh, I want to be like those people, right? So Jupiter in general can get into this trap of either having tasted some realization in the past or looking at someone else's realization or success or whatever or growth and thinking, I'm going to make myself like that. It's lying. Usually the individual doesn't think of themselves as lying because in the moment they're kind of connecting to the part of themselves that knows they were that or could be that in potential. 
but they are lying. It's a, a charlatan being something that you're not. And that can be really emphasized with Jupiter and Gemini in general, where we can speak all the words to present something that really isn't true or authentic for ourselves. So that's an emphasis here with Jupiter and Gemini in the 10th house, not to compare ourselves to the success of other people or try to replicate or become or look the way other people do it. Find your unique voice. And I think, again, similar to a lot of the other signatures, the cross-reference of other fields, right? If you're doing one kind of work, working in a particular profession or particular field, there might be a completely other field that suddenly becomes of interest to you that you might find yourself getting involved in, and that'll create a lot of enhancement and growth, and at the same time, a radical simplification of what could otherwise be way too much going on. Jupiter and Gemini in the 11th house. 11th house corresponds to both liberation from the known, where we're always freeing our mind from precedent, and where we're always going to be forming community with people that kind of resonate with where we're at in our own vibration. So Jupiter and Gemini in the 11th is freeing the mind from all of the answers. You know, let's say you're a scientist and you've been looking through the literal or metaphorical sci uh, telescope and you have it all mapped out. You got the cosmos and you feel like you have a very objective view or understanding. And suddenly you have a realization or you have an insight or read a scientific article um, or you see something that doesn't fit the framework of all the other thoughts that you've been having for 20 years that otherwise created a sense of continuity and consistency in your mind. The sense of intellectual cohesion and consistency and thought can be completely interrupted by new pathways of thought, um, new data, knowledge that you've otherwise not seen before that can actually feel very destabilizing. Now, the key for Gemini in the 11th in general we're going to map out reality at a, according to our level of consciousness. The more we're willing to kind of open up our antennae, right, vibrate on a higher level, we're going to be able to receive higher signals and literally formulate thoughts and logical processes to understand reality on a completely different dimension. Right, and this is like the difference between like Newtonian physics or quantum physics, or I would say how mainstream society thinks we live in a singular solar star system versus what I strongly feel, and there's a lot of evidence for, we're likely a part of a binary star system. To consider a new thought, even with an otherwise totally scientific framework, we need to have an openness and be willing to not know. Like Gemini in the 11th is freedom from information. Um, I put together information. I created a theory. Most theories aren't true. They're just theories, but then they are written about in textbooks and we repeat them over and over and over again. So they become a Jupiter belief system. So there can be a whole bunch of new insight. And I think the gift with Jupiter and Gemini in the 11th is <coughs> it can really magnify sort of the logical fallacies of thought many new ways of thinking, new frameworks of thought, new perspectives, new angles into reality might become available where suddenly everything makes sense, like holistically, how it's all interconnected, how the macro and the micro are kind of archetypally related, and we can start seeing this greater intelligence at play. So this can be an incredibly exciting experience. It could also feel very overstimulating, right? Like the mind can be going really, really, really quickly and that can feel overwhelming. The key is to not look for confirmation or approval from other people. Like, don't wait for other people to agree with your thoughts. Don't be looking for other people to resonate because that'll induce a sense of alienation and otherness and it can easily be disheartening, right? The trap here is feeling a very different, feeling like I don't know how to express myself or um, no one's gonna understand what I'm talking about. So be, be authentic to yourself. This is being true to your own vibration. And this is where we have, you know, friends and people that we resonate with. There can be a sense of suddenly entering into a field that you've never been before. A whole group of people that you've never interacted with before. Talking about things that you're just started thinking about. And suddenly it makes sense. Suddenly you're speaking a language that other people are also speaking. Or the opposite. Again, you might find yourself suddenly not speaking the same language that you're speaking with other people and you don't really know where to place yourself. So the other dimension here is there also can be in terms of new social connections, new friends, new communities, that can feel very exciting. 
um, like getting involved in an astrology community or a scientific community or whatever, but we can overdo it, right? We can get involved in, to give an example, all kinds of new thought, expansive, scientific, spiritual communities that are really exciting for us, but not really learn anything and kind of find ourselves just sort of dabbling in all of them. So I think what's really important with Jupiter and Gemini in the 11th is staying very authentic to your own vibration and just not worrying about whether you belong or don't belong. You know, that's the kind of signature where in like past lives, these kinds of people were hung because they, you know, realized something about the solar system that was contrary to prevalent mainstream religious thinking, right? So there's always this edge of seeing something new. The last thought for the signature is, we have in the world today, these different community social media networks through which ideas are shared and information exchanged. But again, that issue with Jupiter and Gemini is the duplicity, um, the face that we're showing, like the avatar that you're using and that represents yourself. In a sense, it's cool because the avatar is sort of like a way of connecting with an energetic quality of your being and it's not really your body and your body isn't really you anyway. So it's kind of unique in that way. And it makes a lot of sense in terms of connecting with our vibration, not so much the physical, but we can also easily pretend to be something that we're not, right? We can get lost and like, I'm the cool kid now, or I'm part of this, or I'm fitting into this subculture. So I think this really does bring forward a calling. What is the way in which you're introducing a new thought or a new way of being into the community that maybe no one's done yet? And this is how new systems begin, new ways of thinking new social orders, you know, with Uranus entering Gemini soon and a part of this trine with Pluto and Aquarius, this Jupiter and Gemini in the 11th really speaks to that. This is the power of a thought that no one's ever thought before that can completely revolutionize the world and how we do this whole social human thing. Our final house, Gemini in the 12th house. The 12th house corresponds to that which is ultimately meaningful and thus where we might put meaning into that which has no meaning and then be disillusioned in the revelation that it was never meaningful to begin with. It's like creating a sandcastle and we feel good about it until the waves come and wash it away. Here it's kind of like creating an empirically logical, cohesive framework of reality in our mind and we think we understand it all. We think we figured it out. We're studying something and like, oh, this is like that because of this. And then a new piece of information comes in and there's dissonance. Either we ignore that information because here with Jupiter and Gemini in the 12th, we want to believe that we know already because to not know would actually make us feel very insecure and lost. Or we accept, oh, I don't know. And what, what's revealed here is anything can be logical. Insanity can be logical. Anything can be argued to make sense, even if it's totally insane. So the presence of logic itself doesn't point to sanity or truth. What's learned with Gemini in the 12th house is to actually use the mind as an instrument and an agent for something of greater meaning. What are we inspired to learn about? The key is to recognize we're not going to learn everything about it because you can't. You can never learn everything about life. We're never going to use the mind to arrive at oneness because it's infinite. We can't get there. But to follow that inspiration, where we're gonna find ourselves really wired, like we're an instrument to learn something and to receive something. And there can be an authentic brilliance that arises here in really being able to grasp this greater, more, more holistic interconnectedness between all things, or many things rather, and the ability to explain otherwise very complex spiritual concepts in ways that anyone can understand. And if you are finding that you're studying something or you're lost or it's confusing, there can be this clarity of insight and inspiration where suddenly it all makes sense now. And the, the astrology connects with the astronomy, which connects with the biology, which connects with the physiology. It all starts to make sense and it's no longer confusing. I think that happens when we let go of trying to believe, and this can be a Jupiter and Gemini overcompensation. If I can sort of hide myself from the emptiness and the void of life, with a lot of logic and clear information and knowledge, then I won't have to worry about feeling lost and actually very small. In realizing we're just an instrument, we're not big or small, we're actually incomprehensible. And here our minds are incomprehensible. There might be an interest here in deepening our connection to spirituality, to meditation, to spiritual knowledge, things that bring our mind into relationship 
to something greater than ourselves that inspires us. So we're not endlessly seeking or trying to figure it out. You know, a good example for Gemini, Jupiter in the 12th is like um, a kid in class that grows up thinking that they're just not smart because they don't understand what everyone's talking about. All these things are being said and I can't follow the connections. So there can be a feeling of a feeling very slow, but actually within that soul <clears throat> is this light and this capacity for deep, deep inspiration and wisdom and insight and knowledge if they trust their own personal relationship with the divine. So being inspired with knowledge and ideas that can really be shared to inspire the masses. So this one dimension of Jupiter and Gemini in the 12th, you might find yourself speaking words or sharing information that then goes viral or it inspires the masses. Something comes through you that becomes relevant. And there's like a brilliance in this ability to kind of approach very complex, like, you know, complex quantum physics, but to speak about it in ways that anyone can understand because that's the brilliance of the signature. Jupiter, which is simplifying, it's not adding more because it's not compensating for anything here. That's the key. And then Gemini is logical and clear and it's ordered. And 12th house, it's inspired. We're just clearly marking the difference between delusion, right? Logical delusional pathways that you're inventing versus actual spiritual clarity. One more reflection on the signature. In the sense that the 12th house speaks to where we can get lost or distract ourselves from reality, kind of escape from the world, there's the possibility in the signature of just really losing ourselves with a lack of discrimination, consuming all kinds of data, all kinds of beliefs, all kinds of ideas, and not having any kind of discernment. So our path becomes sort of so open-ended, our mind is so open, and there's no spiritual discrimination at all. This means we can theoretically believe anything anyone tells us and walk all kinds of paths, but be completely deluded. So I think an essential teaching here is to simplify. Let go of all of the distractions, all of the ways in which we might be drawn out to endlessly get consumed by a notion of that which is totally meaningless and taking us away from what's meaningful. So staying connected to our inspiration, where we have a connection to meaning that is greater than our own making, I think this is where we can really find ourselves coming into a place of mental clarity where things just really make sense. And I think it makes sense because we're in touch with something greater than our own making, which is the only place where things make sense. Otherwise, it's like grasping at straws and trying to make clarity out of all of this chaos. All right, and that completes our journey of Jupiter through the 12 houses. Please feel free to comment in the section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.